Hi everybody, welcome back to another Asus ROG Ally video and in this one we're going to be looking at the new Fluid Motion Frames graphics drivers from AMD which really are transforming what this little device can do. Now remember this is the non-extreme version of the Ally so if you've got the extreme version um, it's going to be uh, you're going to, going, to, going to get even better performance and what we're going to do is we're going to wander around Cyberpunk 2077 with um, AM, AFMF off and then we're going to turn it on so this is going to be difficult to see but up in the top right hand corner you'll see the frames per second now we're using AMD's overlay because with um, F, A, AFMF in fact I'm just going to call it fluid frames you can't use the armory crate overlay because it doesn't detect it properly um, so at the moment it is off um, so I thought probably the best thing to do is if we go into the settings, actually, and I can kind of show you what settings I'm running. Um, so here we go. So here we go. Here we go. So we are running um, FSR 2.1 with performance turned on. I know normally in my videos I don't recommend running any sort of um, FSR or DLSS or anything like that um, if the game can render at a reasonable rate without it on. However, Cyberpunk 2077 is going to challenge almost any computer, let alone a handheld device. So I think you really need to have FSR on. And basically what that does is it makes the game render at a lower resolution than the native resolution of the screen. So for example, this screen is set up for 720p because this is the non-extreme version of the Z1. So I don't run it at 1080p, I run it at 720 So with FSR performance it will probably be rendering at something like 600p and then the FSR uh, upscaling algorithm and sharpening algorithm then upscales that um, to 720p so the idea is you get a better frame per second because of that um, crowd density medium field of view 80 and what you'll see the common motion blur low the common thing here what you see is basically everything set to medium so it's kind of a custom version of the Steam Deck setting um, and I found you know that this this kind of works okay for me. Now remember, you must have VSync off, and you must be in full screen mode, and you want your screens uh, in 120 hertz a second frame for AMFM to work. So just keep an eye on the average frames up in the top right script, top right under the corner of the screen, and you see kind of what we're getting with AFM fluid motions frames off. Um, I'm not a big fan of um, FSR and DLSS because they do soften the screen slightly. In fact, I probably should really turn it up a bit. Yeah, but, you know, I think you know, <laughs> we're getting a very respectable sort of between 30 and 40 frames a second at the moment, which I, I think, you know, it's pre it, that's, pretty, that's pretty good, isn't it? I mean, when you think about the, when Cyberpunk 2077 first came out, the challenge that... Um, it was, you know, for even really powerful computers um, to run it nicely. And here we are, you know, with a handheld device. So we had got a bit of a dip there as we go from a different area. In fact, let's go over. This is quite a busy area here. So let's see if we can cross the road. Look at this. I mean, it's an amazing looking game. Isn't it? It, it still blows me away that we have devices that, that can show this sort of graphical detail in a handheld device. I mean, it's absolutely amazing. Of course, we could plug this into a monitor and uh, and uh, do it that way as well. But the beauty of these devices is the fact that they are handheld, they are portable. Um, and we're running sort of at 720, uh, running at 15 watts TDP. Okay, so the idea of that is we get decent um, battery life out of that. So as you can see, you know, we were getting between sort of 25 and 35, 40 frames a second then, weren't we? So what we'll do now is let's turn on fluid motion frames so let's go gaming and let's turn on fluid motion frames there and then let's go back into cyberpunk let's go back to our gamepad and what you should see is we start should get the frame straight away you can see we're getting between 50 and 60 frames a second now the way that this works and what i really like about this technology is that and it feels smoother straight away i know it's difficult when you're watching this on a probably on your phone and i'm recording this on a phone as a phone as a, the way that it works is instead of 
getting the game to render at a lower re resolution or anything like that. What it does is it looks at the frame that the game is rendering now and the next one and then inserts um, fake frames, if you like, in between to get give you this smooth feel. And as you can see, we're up to 60 frames a second. Now, I'm not moving particularly fast here. Um, if you sort of spin around, you'll see the frames drop off incredibly because what the technology needs, what, what the driver needs, is it needs lots of information. Um, and it wants the difference between the frames to be not that much. That's when it works at its best. So, for example, if I don't move at all, you know, we're getting up to 60 frames a second there. When I start moving, its ability to work out what the frame should be, you know, it drops considerably. Um, so you do have to kind of remember that kind of limitation that um, a um, AFMF has. But from my experiences so far, oop, hello, just got knocked over. The downsides, you know, are well worth it. The only thing I haven't really done much testing of is how it affects battery life. Because obviously, instead of just, you know, going along at sort of 20 to 35 frames a second, the screen is going along at so, so 70 frames a second, as you can see now, with no loss of quality. That's the important thing for me. There's no loss of quality. Um, um, it's not, you know, not downscaling or anything like that. You will get some blurries, blurries sometimes, and sometimes you get um, different edges. But the smoothness is absolutely fantastic. And although I am demoing this on the um, ROG Ally, of course, Steam Decks and most other handheld devices, apart from things like the Claw, they use AMD graphics, which means that we're going to be getting this um, on the Steam Deck and on the Lenovo Legion Go and everything like that. What is different though about the ROG Ally, even with this uh, non-extreme version, is the fact that this device and the extreme version have a variable refresh rate screen. So what that means is that um, as the sort of the render rate, if you like, of the um, program goes up and down, of the game goes up and down, you know, between you know 40 and 70 frames a second, the screen is changing its refresh rate along with that, and that makes things look much, much smoother. Um, now, the Steam Deck, even the OLED version, which I've got, does have a beautiful screen, beautiful sort of HDR OLED screen um, that is that is absolutely fantastic, but it's not variable refresh rate. You know, you can set V-Sync to it, so the game will lock to the refresh rate that you set it, and it can go up to... Um, 90 uh, 90 hertz or 90 frames per second but that's not as good in my opinion as something like this with a variable refresh rate in fact i would love to have a steam deck you know with a variable refresh rate even lcd screen like we have here i think one of the problems with the steam deck is that the lcd screen that the original had just wasn't very good <laughs> um, compared to like the screens that you see here on the rug ally and things like the lenovo legion go so I've also done a little bit of testing on GTA 5 where I was driving around and running around and although you don't get quite as much a uh, increase in frames when you are driving because obviously if things are changing fast it was still pretty good and you, I'd expect to see the same thing in uh, in Cyberpunk. In fact, I tell you what, why don't we call our... All right, there's a bike over there. Let's jump. We might as well jump on the bike, mightn't we? Let's see. Here we go. So just keep an eye on that frame rate. See, it's, again, the the way that this works is it wants to know sort of the the, the the more frames it has that are similar, the faster the fake frames it can insert in between. So if things if the screen's changing very very quickly, um, a uh, F M F can't quite work as well. Um, so that's why you would get less of an increase woo, when we are driving, if I was uh, staying uh, on course. But we're still getting, what, 40 frames a second? Again, you do get these big dips when things change a lot. But that that is pretty cool. And I, I don't know about you, but I, for one, in games like Cyberpunk, 
27 that have these immersive worlds i don't mind walking around slowly or driving around a little bit slower than i would in other games because you know you want to take in all the detail that the devs have spent thousands of hours creating um and i think you'll agree this looks pretty good so there we go amd's fluid motion flames technology on cyberpunk 2077 on the rog ally non-extreme um yeah it looks great you've definitely got to check it out um it's free so you can just give it a go Anyway, that's enough for me. What do you think? Put your questions in the comments down below, and I will, of course, see you again soon.